next we will see about hash fit we will see about hash fits okay uh, i'll modify the same program i just change the name to hash fit instead of array list i will be creating a hash hash fit hash fit string i'll give a name hs is equal to new hash fit string i'll take a string this is i'll add in hs i'll add in all these hs Okay, I am adding a duplicate. Stanley, tell me, hash set will it allow duplicates? No oh, ma'am. It will not allow duplicate. Okay, so I'll display my hash set is okay. Uh, you can either the best except for array. You know all the other things you can use uh, array. Also, you can use you can directly write system dot out dot print ln. can directly print it instead of going for the advanced array even this will work for array okay the only difference is when you go for an advanced for loop uh, you will get things you know not in a very unordered kind of way when you directly print your collection you will get it very ordered with a comma and so on we'll see that we'll see that now. okay so just delete off all this Hash set is very simple. Okay, we didn't do null. Uh, let's see how uh, hash set works. Hash set will it allow a null? Will it allow a null? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it will allow a null. All the other operations are the same. Okay, you can remove set. All that are similar to the array. Okay, I'll save my program as hash hs. I'll save as I'll run my program. I hope you can see my screen, my command prompt. Okay. I had a duplicate. I had a duplicate for called set. Okay. I'll I'll show you the order in which. i entered things i entered things in the order a b z x y z not this is the order in which i entered but you know because z was duplicate it was it won't come an error it will directly be eliminated the second one onwards will be eliminated null can be accepted no problem only thing is you know your hash set will come in a haphazard way you have no control on the order and even this is what i told you when you directly give an sop on your collection you will get it in a much more ordered way like you know you'll have those square brackets at the end you can even have your commas and all that all that come in by default you can try the same for your array okay if you do sop array directly instead of going for the advanced for loop you will get the same kind of an output which looks much more uh, standard and prettier uh, one thing which you can do is uh, try inserting a null into your array we didn't do that you can do it yourself and check try inserting a null into an array okay uh, like you know just as we did earlier you can give array in your program give array dot add null compile your program run the program and see what happens see what happens in an array you will be able to run the program only thing is an exception will be caught an exception will be caught because you know arrays they do not allow nulls you can try it for yourself i had left it out
Now we will see about linked list. Linked list in Java. Okay. Linked list in Java are very, very easy. No much complications as you had in your CCPP because you know we don't have pointers. Okay. We'll have it linked list. I'll create a linked list. Let's say linked list. I'll have string itself. You can have integer, you can have whatever you want. Linked list is equal to new linked list string. Okay. Now I'm going to add in elements into my linked list. Adding is so easy. By default, you go on starting from the initial position. And Uh, I've got all these elements, duplicates, nulls and all wouldn't be a problem. Uh, my linked list is, my linked list is, okay. Now in linked list, let's learn a few more things because that is quite important. Okay. Now initially you have A, B, C, E, F, G. I'll, I'll write it like this so that when you see the output, it is much more easy. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Now, in your linked list, you can add by default or you can add in the first and last positions. Okay, So I'll just add an element called first over here so that it is easier when you see the output. Just like you add in the first element, you can add even in the last element. So uh, I'll add in the last element, let's say LAST. I'll add last. Okay. I'll print out my linked list. Link after first and last add. Okay. I'm adding something in the beginning and in the end and then I am printing my linked list. Okay. You can even get the index. Okay. Like let's say uh, you want to get the what is there in the first position. Okay. Now uh, when you do the get function in linked list, it goes into a data type called object. So um, I'll just say zeroth element. Okay. Zeroth element is ll dot get zero. You can give any. I'll just do an SOP over here. And I can write element. Uh, element is I'm getting the zeroth element. Okay. You can even use a function called set. Okay. Just like you have add and adding to the first and the last, you even have a function called set. Last. Now that also similar. Yes. Just a minute. Just a minute. Is it better now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wanted enters. Okay. Now we were talking about the set, the set method. Okay. So uh, set works similarly to your add, add first, add last. Only thing is you can set it to a particular index. Let's say I'm setting at, in the zeroth place. Add. I'll just do something like changed, changed. I just, I'm giving all these names so that you are able to understand. Okay, 
and then I'll just do an SOP. I think you know, just save this board and show you the output and then delete all the I save the program, I run the program. Uh, Java C L dot Java. Just I didn't save my file. File. Save as L. Okay, I added A, B, C, D, E, F, null in the beginning. After that, what did I do? In the beginning, add first, I added first, add last, I added last. And then I tried to get the element at the zeroth index. Zeroth index, I have first. I got that. After that, I tried using the set. Okay, I gave what? I gave set. I gave set zero comma changed. Okay, and that is how I changed first. Instead of first, I now have a new thing called changed first. First was taken away, and then I got change first. I'll delete off all these so that you know you get fresh outputs again. Now we just have a normal link. Okay. Uh, now we'll learn the remove. Uh, remove is very simple. You just uh, remove. You can uh, either give the index. You can either give the index like remove one. Okay, which will remove the first element. Or you could say like you know remove B. B will not work. Remove C. Which would remove C? Just like an array. Or you could even use something like this. Let's say remove first. Which means, you know, the first element will be removed. Or you can write remove uh, last. Where, you know, uh, the last element will be removed. And then we'll print it. But we'll just do one more thing. Uh, we'll even add one more. Let's say add the uh, third. You didn't add at the particular index. Uh, we'll save the program. We'll run the program. Java LN. This is my original array. Original, sorry, original linked list. A, B, C, D, E, F, null. I told them to remove the first and the last. Okay. So I had A, I have B, C, D, E, F. All the others are removed. And then I told in the third position, that is 0, 1, Third will be, you know, over here, after D, add a word called three. Okay, so you can add the first element, last element, in between, and even by default adding in a linked list. Linked list will permit null. Linked list will permit null. Hash set will permit null. Array will not permit null. We'll go to our next collection element, tree set. Tree set is similar to hash set. No duplicates, 
it will allow nulls but the only thing is sorting will happen in the ascending order you did see in hash set you had no order followed isn't it stanley hash set you know things came yeah. random haphazardly in tree set it is sorted in the ascending order uh, you have add clear oh, we didn't see clear we'll see clear the clear every uh, collection of uh, they have then you have contains first to check whether it is empty or not last remove and then to check the size of the tree set we even have enumerators in java you will very you will be very comfortable with enumerators in c and cpp enumerators you normally use when you know all the possible values which a particular element can take at compile time uh, for example days of a week planets in the solar system type of cards in a deck and so on directions all those come under enu come under the enu now uh, enumerators in java they are usually stored into an array and the functions which are normally used are ordinal and value of value of is camel case ordinal and value of we will even see something called vector okay vector also is a collection framework element uh, same way vector is equal to new vector now vector has two variables you call them initial capacity and capacity increment both which we will see when we do the programming please have it you will have two new variables over here capacity and capacity increment just like any other thing you can add element find out the capacity check whether it contains or not copy into find out a particular uh, element at an index first element last element the same things which you do everywhere you will be able to do it in vector okay. now we are going to see three sets in java i just change my program name instead of linked list i will have tree set tree set ts new tree set Uh, I've got the same things. Uh, A B C D E F. Null came as nuts. Interesting. <laughs> Because I gave all repos. Okay, three setters. Unsorted. X. Uh, remove first, remove last. We know all these. I will not, will not do it again. Uh, we'll see methods which we didn't see uh, till now. Okay. Now, tree set. You can find out the size. Remove and all will work just like your any other things which we will not repeat again. We learn about things which are not there in others. Uh, so, tree set dot. 
Uh, just like you find ps dot file, you can even uh, find the last ps dot last ps dot first for a tree set. Uh, you can even find out uh, whether it contains something. I'll just give away it contains. It will give you a boolean, a true or a false. It will give you true. Or false. Okay. Um, I'll just take something. X. Will let you know whether it contains S or not. Okay. Uh, we even have clear. Clear. We didn't see clear. TS dot clear. Okay. The whole thing will be. Thing would be flushed away. And then I'll just do a oh, got it. I'll save my program as TS. I'll save as TS dot Java. Java C TS. dot java java ts I have an exception java ts uh, the exception came up because I tried entering a null Trees won't take up a knot. Anyway, uh, I entered my elements in this order. X, S, C, A, E, B. Okay, after which I entered a null. Null trees will not take. So I commented that away. So the exception went away. Now, even though I entered in this particular order, trees by default it will sort it in the ascending order. A, B, C, E, S, X. It came up in a sorted order, even though I entered in this particular order. You get the size. Okay. Uh, I gave a code like this. Just copy. Yes. Last. Okay. I had told them to find out TS dot last. TS dot last. Okay, uh, the SOP elements went wrong. I'll change off my three last is three last is three contains S. Three contains S. Because it was a copy paste, all SOPs were same. Stanley, I believe you're able to see my command prompt. Yes, ma'am. I made my SOPs a bit better now so that you'll be able to understand. Our tree set is size is six. The last element I gave ps dot last, a method called last to find out the last element. And then I did a method called ts dot contains. TS dot contains S. My tree, it contains S over here. So it did give me a Boolean value called true. Contains will give you a Boolean, true or false out. 